Star Millway and 2nd Street. And that brick building, is, that's the remnants of the Star Mill, which is kind of the second flour mill in town after Newby's Mill. But this was built, the mill was built in the 1880s. And in the 30s, the WPA actually helped build a pool there. And this only, the, the, the frame of the building was only there for like a couple of years, and then they took it down and used some of the brick to remodel the city hall that was on, uh, that would be Cal Street, I think. Here's the Wells Lamont and Smith Glove Factory, which was in a building no longer existent at um, Second and Baker. So this would be kind of the parking lot for First Federal. Where, and this was in the upper floor of this. And this was in uh, 37. And I guess eventually this company moved to Carlton and produced gloves there. And the building is still in Carlton. Yeah, that building's still there. So here's a construction photo from uh, Highway 18. And uh, this is um, over Muddy Creek um, between the Bernard's Farm and the former Pine Tree Patio Restaurant. You can kind of see it in the background of those pine trees. That bridge is the original bridge for Highway 18, and it's actually still there, kind of in the bushes. So if you drive, you can actually see, if you kind of glance over there, you can see it, but this was in uh, 37, and they were bypassing that bridge. Now this doesn't show up very well on this. Some of these photos, like the, um, the software that I had initially wasn't very good, and the quality, leaves a little to be desired, but we've at least got a digital copy of them so we can go back and know what we have and get better copies later. But this is uh, looking down 3rd Street, this is Baker. That building's still there where the uh, knitting shop is. That building's gone. And I still don't know what the name of this building was, but I'm really kind of interested in learning more about it. Yeah, this one doesn't show up very good either, but this is over, that's the 1893 building. Then Union Block on the other side. Christmas decorations. Christmas lights in 37. I didn't even know that they had Christmas lights back then. <laughs> I mean, you never really see pictures of them, but. <laughs> this house is uh, on uh, Birch Street, near the corner of Birch and Fifth, kind of on the other side of the park. And this is now the, um, the Wine Country Cottage vacation rental. And this is, I think, the picture when it was brand new. Kind of unusual but for a brick house in Oregon, even at that time period, with our abundance of wood and everything. But... Yeah. So, Christmas Park, Christmas Park, Yes. Yeah, so there's, you can see that cedar tree there next to it is, uh, there's a kind of Italian house that's kind of, they need some work and just, it's right at that corner, 5th Street and Birch. Just, so the park, the park drive is on the other side of the houses that are over there. Here, there's, I have a couple pictures from the grand opening of the Columbia Market in 1947, which was in what is now Harvest Fresh. And I, it seems like this was pretty much a grocery store from the beginning, except for later on. I remember before it was Harvest Fresh back in the 90s, it was like a video store, I think. Yeah. Okay. So this is kind of in the corner where the current entrance is. In the original grocery store, the uh, vegetables and things were right there by the window. Mm. And okay. they had a big ball of string way up in the ceiling. <laughs> of course, that's when they wrap each individual thing. You know, they wrap your head of lettuce mm -hmm. and, you know, your watermelon and everything else mm -hmm. and put the price on the outside. Yeah, because that was built in about 1913, I think, was when this building was built. So yeah, My mom even sold eggs. You know, <laughs> except a dozen at a time. I like some this picture, too, because, you know, they still got those same columns there. And they've got some of the refrigerated vegetable um, That's when they, the way the front, they put that in there. That was where, and that mist came down. That was a wonderful <laughs> thing. <laughs> okay, so this is 
uh, the PV Oil gas station, which was located where the Chevron station is at, um, what is that, like Baker? Is, is it West Side Road or is it it's ba Baker Street? It's across from Davis. Yeah, it's across from Davis and Otto. You know, yeah, Baker Street. Yeah. And it seems like that there was a couple different versions of this gas station over the years, but this is in 47. Here's a picture of the uh, Eola Village uh, farm labor camp out on uh, Highway 233 between uh, Amity and Dayton. And uh, the interesting thing is there, there's a couple buildings left from that complex and the family that owns it now is uh, they uh, restore Porsches, the vintage Porsches there. Um, yeah, his family lived there for a little while. Cool. There was somebody, there was like a couple family members that came into Lafayette like last summer, I think, they were looking for pictures of, of this. Well, that was a military, I believe, when it was built. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Wasn't, it, wasn't that military when they built it? Uh, that's what Mel Gelcher told me. Hmm. It was cavalry, basically. Hmm. Two, they had people stationed there and then they transported the horses over to the beach. To yeah. the beach. From what I saw, okay, maybe that was during the war because they built it during the during the Depression, yeah. I think was when they built it and and then they took it, okay, and then they took it over. Okay. Here's a picture, I, I love the old like utility trucks and vans and all this stuff and this is for the Standards grocery store and this the building in the background there is the back of the building where uh, Lamp Valley Vineyards tasting room is on Cal Street there. Um, so here's something really interesting I found as I was scanning through the photos of there. Um, back when the turkey industry was really big, and this is in the late 40s, they were actually shipping baby turkeys to other farms around the country by plane. Wow. <laughs> and I like this is another kind of cool, cool uh, logos and stuff for the Menifee Turkey Ranch. Um, and that's the one that's out of the Hill. Yeah. Uh -huh. That plane, by the way, was built for the military. It's a Douglas C-54. Mm -hmm. And then when it was sold, Converted to a DC-4 when it became a commercial airplane, and they could uh, both doors would open. I've seen jeeps go inside of them. Wow! Here's a picture of the. Uh, <laughs> right. They were shipping them. I, I think in one of the articles I saw, like Utah, and there were some other places that they were shipping them. I guess. <laughs> so something that's really interesting with um, in the news registers, there's lots of car accident photos, and it's not so much the accidents themselves that's inter that I find interesting. It's one the cars because I'm I really like vintage cars, and also the stuff in the backgrounds because it ends up showing lots of interesting buildings or businesses or how the roads were in the back the, back then. This is in '48 and. At eight and uh, Galloway or Ford, I think. So there's you can see the armory, which is now the community center in the background. But I just kind of like this picture because I go on this road a lot, and I have no idea what happened there. I could probably go and look in the paper, but it's we have all these bound copies of the newspapers. Some of them are in pretty good shape, and some of them are, and it's kind of a, it takes a long time to actually like find stuff, find the information because. The photos don't have the captain's one. So here's another picture, but this was in 48 or 49, looking down 3rd Street in Baker. It, it doesn't, like I said, this one doesn't really show up very good on the screen right now, but it's pretty cool. So that was a furniture store, standard furniture. So they were involved in other stuff. So here's 
picture of the uh, locomobile that's out sitting out there in the exhibit hall with uh, I think it's Ralph Wortman and uh, Dewey, Thomas Dewey. So 1948, um, May 1948, the Republican primary was very competitive that year, and so Oregon was really important. And so Dewey and Stossen both came to Oregon and even came to McPinville and got to ride around in the locomobile. And that's Stossen right there. Um, in the McFinnville Damages of America book uh, for McFinnville, this picture is actually misidentified as that's supposedly Dwight Eisenhower, but I know it isn't because I, this is the same picture that's in the news register from that year. But. Here's a picture of the remodeling of the Lark Theater, which is located where Third Street Pizza is now. Here's a picture of Memorial School, the elementary school I went to, and my dad went to, when it was brand new back in 48. I was really excited to find this because that was, I had kind of a list in the back of my mind of like some of the pictures that I wanted to look for when I first got access to the archives, and this was one of them. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, I still there too. Yeah. <laughs> and I did too. <laughs> so, way, way back, the, the post office would deliver mail via rail. So they have, they'd have a railway post offices where they would sort the mail as they went along and would drop it off. And in the late 40s, they decided to try the highway post office system where they had converted buses where they sorted mail and dropped them off as they went along. I don't know how successful it was. I haven't looked too deeply into it, but it's a really cool picture. Is that telephone register printing behind it? Yep. Yeah. So this would be in front of what the old post office, which is the county clerk's office, and there's the former telephone register and news register office. Lots of pictures in this archive were taken in front of the telephone register building because that's where they were operating out of. That's the same picture that I was showing earlier, but it had a different date, but it was, you know, it's a really pretty photo. I'd like to get a better quality scan. You can see the, where Berkshire Hathaway offices are. Is that what every ward's a cost on it? Yes. My first job. <laughs> Way back. <laughs> Here's another picture from that series of photos, and this is looking. That's the old high school. So this is Baker Street. And this would be like where the Shell Station and the Wells Fargo and all that are. So, was that a rail line back then? Were there two rails in that last one? No, just nice streaks of light, I guess. Yeah. Well, it looked like there might have been a little snow or some kind yeah, of Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I need to rescan this and take it in. It looks like there's Yeah, yeah. What year was that? 48, 49 ish. So, I don't know which one of them is Joe, but Joe Dancer is one of the gentlemen in this picture. The tall back. Okay. Who's the short? Last name Bennett. I don't. I forget the first name. But I guess they had buses. Yeah. Back in '49. So you can see the old post office in the background there, and the old courthouse. Parking meters. And this is before they took the top off of it. So this is over uh, where 18 and Highway 99 come together, outside of Dayton. And this is the farm stand that was kind of hanging on by a thread that the building's about ready to fall over. But this is before 
even before Highway 18, the Dayton was built, actually. <laughs> McDougal, that's right, yeah. McDougal Corner, yeah. And this is, this road is still there. If you can actually drive on that, it's the old highway. And this was because there, there was an accident somewhere at this intersection. But, <laughs> yeah. But like I was saying, like, looking through some of the accident photos was really cool, like, the stuff in the background is really interesting, to me at least, to see how things were back, back then. So this is the locomobile. After it was in an accident back in 48 or 49. And it had to be put back together, but Ralph Orban did. It was a long trip. Yeah, it was actually being towed back from Tillamook and they got like cut off by a log truck or something. Yeah. Well, it's, this had to replace the wood part of it, I think. I think he was able to say everything else. But. Yeah. This is in his basement. <laughs> and this is after it was restored, I'm pretty sure. Or in front of the telephone register office. And there they are at the airport picking up mail. I don't know who that, I don't know that person is. But. So, something that interesting that I discovered was back in the late 40s, early 50s, McVinville actually had commercial air service. It was West Coast Airlines. And we had midget races, midget car races, at the Shodio grounds, um, which would be located um, to the west of Dunaway, kind of Dunaway Middle School, over towards uh, the Squires Mobile Home Park. So they had like a racetrack there and everything. Here's a. I'm guessing the winning driver with the ice cold bottle of Coke. <laughs> Another picture. That's pretty cool. I had no idea there had car races like that here. So this picture actually. Um, so I think this was, this was after the, the local wheel was stored right there. But there was a vintage auto club taking a trip out to Pacific City. So there was a couple pictures from when they were getting ready to head off. And of course, lots of really cool stuff in the background of all the neon signs and was like the Palm Cafe and the deluxe bill billiards. Some of these pictures you get to spend like hours of looking at, looking at all the various details. It's just so cool. But I highly recommend, once again, go on the news register, send Folio site, and just look through the pictures because there's a lot of cool stuff. And the cars on the bottom right are Packards or Hudson's, aren't they? Yeah, I think that's a Hudson. That, I think, is like a Chevy fastback kind of design. Um, Here's an aerial photo. I don't have an exact date yet. It was marked as 49, but based on some comments I got when I shared it off with Ruben Contreras on the Dragging the Gut Facebook page, some people were saying, based on some of the buildings that aren't in it, it's maybe more about 47. So there's the high school. Yep. This is before Adams was put all the way through and they did the one-way couplet, but this is even before the that gas station that was in that picture I just showed earlier. You can see the tennis courts, um, city park up here downtown. You can still kind of see the, the bridge 
Well, it, was West, it wasn't Second yet, it was like Western Avenue at the time. They had this rickety wooden bridge across the creek there. Go ahead and change the picture. In the I know a lot of you guys could probably just... In the just, background of that but, one, was there smoke coming from uh, mills out there in the world? Yeah, back yeah. there. Yeah, I think that was the Engel and Worth Mill or... And that was out south of town. Another thing is, is I think this was before they built. This is the old, where the old Three Mile Lane Bridge, or Dayton Avenue Bridge, was. Here's a picture of when they were building the Coral Drive-in, a Corral Drive-in, out over would be where Wilco is now, in about. 49 or 50. I was excited to find a picture of that too because they, they I said it went down to the front of station. Yeah, so it did. Yeah, so it didn't last very long because they only about 12 years and the screen blew down in the Columbus Day storm. <laughs> I think that this picture was taken over like at Alderman Farms out of out of Dayton, but. A helicopter, a <laughs> state senator ran for election in a <laughs> helicopter. <laughs> Here's the old Dairy Queen, which yes, yeah, I I was going to use that for the first. Uh, vintage these register page, but the caption was partially cut off, and we didn't have the name of the the owner. Um, and the original owner was it was W. H. Aldrich, and this was before the Hubbards, who I think owned it for a long time. Uh, but this is now uh, Muchas Gracias over on Twelfth Street, but they added a piece onto this because this is before they even had like indoor seating for it. But the big, it was like the, the, the big story about this was how they had oblong shaped hamburgers and a half pound of french fries. <laughs> it was really popular, I guess. They had a dairy queen out there on the north side of Bakersfield, Washington, too. And here's the old, well, yes, it was Dave's TV for a long time, Jumbo Cafe. Yeah, now it's the Edward Jones office that they, they remodeled the building. And here is a very late photo of McFoonville's original uh, railroad depot. So this was taken in 56, and this would be on 5th Street. Um, next to kind of behind the old power plant, which is now Elizabeth Chamber Cellars. So here's the railroad tracks right back there. And uh, this was built about 1879, I think, and torn down sometime in the 60s. So after the, it became the freight office after they built the uh, the current, well, the current train depot that's over on Third Street which that was built for passenger service for the electric railroad in 1912. Here's a couple photos from a um, high school driver economy run in 57 where they were competing to get the best gas mileage. <laughs> and this is actually really interesting because this is, this is Second Street and Adams. So there's the library. And this would be where the parking lot is, and this would be like where First Federal is, and Fire Department would be over here. Parking meters. Yeah, yeah, I know, we had parking meters back in the 50s. <laughs> you know, I, I'm really into vintage Volkswagens, and I love this, that the winner of the competition was this. Volkswagen Beetle, which I I was also kind of glad to see that we had that they were around in the late fifties here because we didn't have a dealership until like sixty two. And uh, this gas station was located. This would be where the old fire truck is in the fire department. 
back corner of Second and Baker there. This weird colonial style gas station. Starting line picture, looking towards Adams. <laughs> and I, I don't know the story behind this, but they're pushing it. <laughs> Yeah, there was a monkey puzzle tree. <laughs> and once again, I don't know like what part of the competition this was, because I don't know what the rules were and all that. I have to go back and read that article, but. <laughs> <laughs> And here's a picture of the building. So the, the glove factory was upstairs in this building. It was the Woodman of the World um, building. It was kind of fraternal organization way back when. This building was torn down in the 80s, I think. It was sports center, I think. Yeah, the, the, later on it was the sports center, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So here's a picture of, as they were completing the construction of Adams Street, the Adams Baker one-way couplet thing. And zoom in a little bit more. There's the high school. There's the old Mormon church, which was kind of new at that time period. Um, whole assortment of gas stations and cafes and Is, is that circa before 1950? Oh, this is about 57. 57? Yeah. Is that hog truck still had cheese steaks on it? Hmm. Oh, that, yeah. Except there's so many, so many things to look at. Yeah. Another thing you can find is that we had a drag strip. Back in the early 60s, um, it, it would be the, the runway that, I don't think they'd been using it for gliders for a while, but the one that they had, they would run the gliders off of. And I guess that there were even like write-ups and stuff in like Hot Rod Magazine, and if you go to the World of Speed Museum in Wilsonville, they have a couple like trophies and like a jacket that somebody got won at the drag racing there. One of the cars. Big blower, and, and this all I'm only scratching the surface of what's on here because I've scanned about twenty thousand photos. <laughs> okay, so part of the story is so I have kind of an unfinished project that's been it's kind of on on the back burner. Nineteen sixty five Volkswagen Bug that was bought new here in McFinnville at Midway Motors, at this dealership, which prior to being a Volkswagen dealership was Applegate Motors. And this would be over, this is where the State Farm offices and the Papa Murphy's Pizza are now, next to Taco Bell and across from the Shell Station. And it's the same building, though they're making pizzas where they were fixing the cars up. <laughs> but this is in 61, I actually, I had looked at microfilm from the news register way before I started scanning and found this picture in the paper, not a very good quality one, and when I got access to the archives, I was like, I have to try and find this picture, and found it. So, yeah, so this would be the old Texaco station um, next to Tommy's Bike Shop, which I didn't realize existed in 67. And uh, I forget what the, the nickname for this particular kind of statue was, but the general term for these was mufflermen. Because a lot of like repair shops had giant uh, guys like this holding mufflers. Didn't you know you can trust your car as a man wears a star? <laughs> I don't think he knew that. <laughs> <laughs> Too young. <laughs> <coughs> 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 
<laughs> Here's another picture from 67 when a bunch of uh, VW dealers from uh, Canada came for a training session at the um, Midway Motors dealership. Okay, okay, this isn't in the right order, but um, this is from 1983, February 1983. This person drove his car through the high school. Oh yeah, that's so yeah. And I was really glad to find these photos because I had heard kind of like, it sounded more like a legend and not like something that actually happened, but... <laughs> Yeah, by the way, so I kind of skipped kind of far ahead because, like I said, I've scanned, I've been scanning chrono chronologically and I'm up to 62 at the moment. But I occasionally have gone and scanned older photos that I found from later years because they're filmed, there's negatives all the way up to 2002. And the later negatives are all like 35 millimeter and it's going to be kind of a big project to scan them because there's like 10 pictures of the same, same thing since it's like snap, 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 you know? So there's lots of copies of the picture, but. How, how did this happen to his car if it was at the school? He drove through the hole. But I mean, what did he hit? I mean, he must have hit something. I think he went the other way. I think he went the other way, though. I think. This is the back. Yeah, he went the back. Yeah. But then he went through the front. He went yeah. the there's not a, I, the I think he thought he was going to shoot. I went over there this morning after that. Yeah. 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 Torn up. It's like it's just said he caught air in a couple of spots because that thing has those ramps that go up. <laughs> they thought he was doing, they thought he was doing 80 or 90 when he went through the front door. Did he survive? Yeah, he did. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think he was doing last. Gina went over the Yeah, I I threw this picture in here because there's my parents and there's me. We, can, we, so we won a car scene or what was? You were the first baby born on National Safety Week. Okay. And I had seen the newspaper clipping when I got access to the negatives. I was like, I have to try and find this. And there's a whole set of these pictures. But, um, it's kind of weird though to see a picture of me like in black and white. Since pretty much all the other pictures we have are color. But, that car seems a little big, I think. Yeah. But the other thing too is this is back when the uh, I was born in the old hospital before the, um, they moved out to Highway 18. No, it's not Sunny and Cher, because that's who I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'm getting to the end of just the news register photos portion, but I also have a few photos from other sources that I'd like to share also. Like I said, I could go like hours and hours and hours, but I'll, I made sure not to put everything on yet. So a couple weeks ago, I went to a postcard show in Portland and found a couple of McVinville postcards that I had never seen before, so I just had to get. So this would be it's the Odell building, which is where the news register is now. And there's the Oddfellows building where the Third Street Flats is. Uh, it was Jameson Hardware at the time. I guess I can zoom in a little bit more. There was a wood building on um, this corner. This is probably 20s, I think. Well, it was 20s because this building was built. I don't know. I, I wasn't sure if it wasn't like scratches on the paint. Okay. Yeah. Still wagons. I really like yeah, I really like the sign up on the building there. I don't know if it was like lit up or anything, but <laughs> this is a unique view of a park and the old pool that I'm glad I, I found because add to my collection of pool photos that I've gathered up. Yeah. 
And that lasted until the 30s. I found a picture in the, in the paper when they were taking it down. Um, so, as a kind of a little bit of an aside, um, we, the Historical Society has a bunch of uh, oral history, um, we have an oral history collection. Um, Chuck Rogers has digitized a bunch of them on the CD, and I listened to some tapes from uh, Dorothy Gunnis, who is of the Wharton family. And she talks about, in one of the interviews, about how one of the things she loved growing up here was the swimming pools. And she remembers this swimming pool, and she said that what happened to the Statue of Liberty was it just eventually just disintegrated and they got rid of it. Um, and that was something that was good to hear about, because later on I find some, pa some pictures in the news register in the 80s where they're like, whatever happened to this? Like, we have no idea what happened. <laughs> And I, another interesting thing was that there were definitely some sanitation issues because apparently one summer there was an outbreak of boils <laughs> and all the kids got <laughs> So the, uh, that house earlier, the, the brick house that I showed a picture of is back over in this area. Um, this house right here is the house next to it on 5th and Birch. That's, that's to answer your question, Dave. Because uh, this is Park Drive over here. Here's a picture that I've had for a while. I just like this showing the entrance into the park. You could actually drive into the park from there. And there's the old uh, Civic Center built on the location where the pool is now and the library. And you can see the old star mill across the creek there. So here's a bird's eye view photo taken from the uh, courthouse. Different kind of view I hadn't really ever seen. Um, there's so much going on. <laughs> there's the old Christian church, which is over where OMI parking lot is now. This is where the old Physicians Medical Center is. Uh, there's the Civic Center again. This is the old uh, news reporter offices. Um, yeah, there's Barn, there Barnes all over the place. Um, I have a couple pictures to show later, but you can see this is Baker Street, and this is the old hotel, like from the hotel building. That, oh, there's so much stuff. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to move on to another one. Here's another view, but this one's much earlier because you can see the old bell tower for the fire department. I think this might have been around 1900. So this, that right there is the Bishop building, which is where the Harvest Fresh is now. So this is the building that was there prior, was built in 1911, 1912-ish. And this is the old, um, I always mix the banks up. This was the Wartman Bank over here, and this was the other bank. So this is where the plaza is now. So this was the National Bank, and then the other one was something else. <laughs> like I said, the Wartman was First National Bank. Okay. I don't remember what the other one was. But you can see off, like towards the other side of the creek, and there's like this house with a cool tower and a big, huge barn. Um, like I said, there's some. I, I, I definitely plan on uh, donating some copies of these pictures to the Historical Society so people can look at these later. But. And it doesn't show up as well in this picture, but there was a big livery stable where the Elks Lodge is, or was now. And here's back behind the old bear pit at City Park. So they had kind of a fence up there for pen for the bears. And I hadn't, I had to get this postcard because I had never seen this view of it before. But how long were the bears in town? Not very long. I don't <laughs> think. Um, I've never seen that one picture. So the park was started in about 1908, so 
in a couple, not too many years. So I have a couple pictures that are really kind of interesting. Um, I think that these pictures, these glass plate negatives ended up at the news register back when Carl Kluster was doing the history column. And I think somebody gave him these pictures. And I happened to discover them because they were cleaning the desk out and I noticed that there were some boxes out and I looked through the boxes and was like, whoa, glass plate negatives. <laughs> so here's a picture of the courthouse. So these pictures were taken mid-teens. Um, and you can see the details pretty nice on them, but they need they need to be scanned a little bit differently, like they need to be raised up so you can get like higher resolution and all that, but I made sure to at least get a couple scans of them. Here's the old Columbus school. And these are all glass plate negatives? Yeah, these couple ones, yeah. I don't know when they were replaced. They built this in 1892, I think? And I don't know when they replaced it with the brick one, but... This is a different view of this one. There's Pioneer Hall at Linfield. Yeah, I think, is that the oak? Or is that? That's the oak. That's okay, the old oak. Here's the original hospital. Um, which I just actually, there was an article that we used in the Vintage News Register page coming a couple weeks ago about how you could subscribe to service there for like everything included for ten dollars a year. <laughs> but you can see they had kind of wraparound porches and there's the, the nurses standing out there. So this would be like Baker Street. Um, so the old the old hospital, like not the original one, but the one that was there, um, was built there this location, which is where we're all going to now. Here's the Presbyterian Church, with the wagon out, the horses, the wagon out front. And the house. Here was the grain hole and store. And this is, this is big. 
perpendicular to the acre street right here, second. So this would be the corner where the uh, Civic Center is now, and was the old police department prior to that. So, so the fire department will be over here. What I found is I got a couple pictures that are from different angles of the same area. This is 1860s, 70s, or 80s, and that is the same. That's, so the guy was standing over here, looking the other direction. And that's the building. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure if this is what the script of band members are. But Well, the fire department was back in here, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a fire department. Oh. And here's a photo. I actually found a couple photos that were just in one of the files at Lafayette that weren't in our, that weren't scanned. So this is looking to the north. And you can see the sign for the Green Hall. There's the old fire department. The old hotel right there. And this uh, gentleman appears to be possibly Chinese, but there's a name on the back and it's a Jake and a Brooks in parentheses. So I don't know. It's not really identified. I mean, that might be his name. I don't know. But I had never seen this picture before. And what I like about this one is that there's a hotel. You can see got the Grange building, which is in the other picture. Um, this building right here. Somewhere else, actually, the Christian store would be where the knitting uh, shop is now. This would be where Cornerstone Drive through the was. But you can see the wooden sidewalks and the bloody streets. And this picture is looking the other direction from the Green Hall with the old fire department tower there.
pictures of the buildings that were on the sites at that time. And here is part of the old high school. From This would be looking from the tennis courts. And there's the old Comb, Combs Market. At that point? It was the junior high at that time. Okay, yeah. Another view of that. This would be Baker Street. So this would be like you were looking like Sherry's would be over here, I think, now. So this location, this is actually where they chose to put the post office when they built it. The old feed mill between 1st and 2nd Street. What I find interesting too is that Galloway Street originally went through and that's the parking lot now. It's another view. This is on First Street. Isn't that where Northwest Turkey? Wow, is that? Might be. I've seen some pictures of that. That probably was. Um, this is looking towards downtown. So there's the big sequoia tree by the courthouse, back behind the courthouse there. This is the, well, it's been various different houses, the Connor House, or which is where um, Jim and Rita Lockett lived. Now the Macy's own it, and it, well, it burnt down and they rebuilt it. But this was a house that they used in Quarterback Princess. But apparently they were looking at this block they were thinking possibly of looking into that block but for the post office, but I'm glad that they didn't since there's a couple of cool houses on that. So this is where the McFinn Planning Department is now. And there was an Arco station where there's a mini mart now. So this is Baker Street and Fifth. what is now McMinimins, I'm really glad that they didn't decide to put the post office there because they probably would have torn it down and that would have... <laughs> but this is back when it was kind of on decline. Here's the old home laundry building. This would be back where they were having the farmer's market. This building right here was the old creamery. And there's some pictures that I, don't, I didn't use for this, but from the 50s when they were still using this as a creamery. And this is back behind Golden Valley Brew Pub. And this is a parking lot now. But I vaguely remember this building still being there. Uh, back behind, there's a gas station right here. Well, it's the mini Super Doggo store. But you can see kind of the roof kind of. My folks used to take cream for that, for that creamery. Oh, wow. That would have been back in the 40s. And then this is Lafayette Avenue and 3rd. So this is where, like, the, there's a computer shop there now. Johnson. Johnson, okay. Yeah, for two blocks, Johnson. Oh, okay. And that is it. Um, <laughs> well, once again, a reminder, you can register at denfolio.com. And you can look at, there's tons of pictures. If you go on here, and, and some of them, we're working on trying to get some captions on them. But like even here, like 48, and there's tons and tons and tons of pictures. <laughs> More baby turkeys. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. I guess that's it for today. So we're, we're adjourned, and uh, I guess there's one more comment here. Uh, reminder, next meeting is April 9th, the day after Farm Fest. It is also Palm Sunday. I have yet to figure out who the speaker is, so watch your newsletter to find out who the program will be there. But the day after Farm Fest, back here. Thank you. We're adjourned. <laughs>